In this video, we'll learn about the mixture brush tool in Photoshop and we'll see how it can be used for painting as well as portrait retouching. Welcome to Fabric Zone. Hey guys, welcome to another episode on Photoshop Basics and Vectrix Home. Today we'll be talking about the Mixture Brush tool in Photoshop. So first of all, we'll do the basic introduction of the tool and then go on to paint a sketch. We'll also go through the skin retouching with Mixture Brush tool and finally, we'll create a beautiful oil painting at the end. Alright, so without wasting time, let's go through the basics first. Mixture Brush tool basically allows you to imitate traditional painting with color palettes and canvas digitally with Photoshop. You can see the Mixture Brush tool on your tools bar within the brush group. Select it and you can see a couple of options on the top. The first option allows you to modify the size, hardness and shape of the brush tip which we learned in the brush tool tutorial. Then you have got the brush preset options panel which we already learned as well. Then you can see the color is over here that works similar to the foreground color swatch but there's a difference because it can not only hold a single color but also a gradient or the entire details of the artwork we are going to apply on the canvas. Click on the arrow icon right beside it and you can see the options to load brush, clean brush and load solid colors only. The reservoir is showing checking boards which means it's empty. Click and drag a brush on the canvas and you can see nothing happens as of now. Click on the load brush option and you'll see the foreground color is picked here. You can change the stroke color by changing the foreground color from the color swatch and then selecting the load brush option or you can directly click on the reservoir color swatch to do the same. All you need to do is click on the load brush option to load the color in the brush because the brush will lose the color once you click your mouse. Try painting on the canvas and you can see your brush behavior is controlled by other options on the options bar. We have already learned about the flow and that is very low over here. You can see the impact on the painting too. Let's increase it to maximum and see the result. Load the brush again and paint on the canvas. You can see the flow has increased but still the brush is not producing a result similar to what we learned in the brush tool, right? That's because all other options are also controlling the impact. Let's try with all at minimum and flow at maximum. The mix option will be disabled as soon as the wetness is dropped to zero. Load the brush again and paint on the canvas. You can see the color in the brush starts to fade away after a short while and it needs to be loaded again, right? And that's exactly what happens if you were painting with a traditional paint brush in the canvas, isn't it? Once you dip your brush in the color palette, it's not going to apply color on the canvas all the way till the painting gets completed. You'd need to dip the brush again into the color palette and that's exactly what can be achieved in the canvas with this brush if you kept the load value at minimum. The intensity of the color in the stroke keeps on depleting once you start applying color on the canvas. Keep the load value higher if you don't want the color to fade away while painting. Now you need to load the brush again. But isn't it so annoying to go to the options bar after each stroke to load the brush? Don't worry, we have a solution. Click on the icon right beside the reservoir that says load the brush after each stroke and that's it. Now the application itself will load your brush after each stroke for you. Here I'll paint a little and then I can again paint without going to the options bar to load the brush. Easy right? The option right behind the load brush option is the clean brush option that will clean the brush after each stroke to give you a clean stroke of the color from the reservoir. Check it off, increase the weightness of the canvas a bit higher and change the stroke color. Try adding some colors in the canvas and you'll see the brush strokes start to appear murky at the starting point mixing all the colors it had picked up during the painting and that's because we are keeping the canvas wet and that will make the brush pick up all the colors from the canvas too and since we didn't clean the brush before starting a new stroke the colors from the previous stroke is accumulated there it won't have happened with the dry canvas if you were working with wetness set to zero percent though but if you want to work on the wet canvas the brush must be cleaned after each stroke. You can always keep it checked for a clean stroke. Let's go to the Windows menu and select History to get back to the initial state of the document. It lists out all the states of the document with actions performed so far. Click on the topmost state, that's the initial one, and you'll get your document as it was initially. Then you have got a couple of presets for the options right behind it. The wetness, load, mix, and flow. These presets will set the values for the wetness of the canvas, the amount of paint loaded into the brush, the ratio of mixing the stroke color with the canvas color and the amount of color flow. Select dry preset and you'll see the wetness set to zero and load at 50%. 
check out how it looks. Looks like the output from a normal brush tool, right? Check out other options too. You have got options like light load and heavy load for dry brush, which will change the load value for you. Let's see the moist preset then. It will add a little wetness to the canvas with light load and medium mix. You can see the white color from the canvas mixing up with the brush stroke. You can check all the options and select the one that you want to work with or create your own custom settings by changing the values on those boxes. Let's clear up the document again. So we saw what the load does and the wetness. Now let's have a look at the mix. We have seen the mix option won't be available when the wetness is set to zero. Here it's set to 100%. Let's drop the mix to zero and see the difference. Here the wetness is too high to notice the difference. Let's drop the wetness a bit, maybe around 30% and check the difference. Here you can see the canvas color is not mixed with the stroke color like it did in the previous strokes, right? And that's because the amount of color being picked up from the canvas is controlled by the mix option. Keep it down to zero to prevent your brush from picking any color from the canvas and keep it to maximum to get all the colors from the canvas only. Here the canvas is white so you won't see the color being picked. Try out with any other color as the background and you'll see it. You can keep it in between to mix up the stroke color with the colors from the canvas equally. Let's clean up the document once again. You can also see the option to add airbrush effect to your brush strokes as well on the options bar. Then you have got the sample or layers option to sample colors from all the visible layers within the document while painting. Then you have got the sensitivity option to control the brush size if you are working with a digital pen. Then let's have a look at the solid colors only option then. You can ask Photoshop to sample a single color from the canvas while painting or the mixture as a whole. Let's create a gradient here. Let's select the load solid colors only option and take a sample from the gradient. You can see a single color value is stored in the reservoir, right? Check the load solid colors only option off and sample again. And you can see the reservoir can store gradients too. And you can see here how it can be used in painting to give a natural look to the painting. The colors are always mixed up in the paintings, right? Let's clean up the document once again and see its output with a different brush tip. Let's select the grass tip and draw grasses with these colors. You can see the result here. Don't you think it looks more natural than the grass painted with the plain brush with color dynamics on? Let's select another brush tape this time. Let's say the chalk one and paint on the canvas. Don't you think this would be a nice option to portray bushes in the paint? Now that you have learned the basics of the mixture brush too, let's try to paint on a sketch with whatever we have learned so far. All right, I've already created a good color for the trees. So let's start with the trees. I'll create a new layer for that and then start painting. Here in this image, I'm working with a dry brush to create a crayon coloring effect. Had we worked with the default brush here, we'll have to work on the shades and highlights separately to produce a better result. But with the mixture brush tool, it's all mixing up at one stroke, right? Let's add a new layer and create a brownish gradient for the trunks. Let's hide all the other layers before sampling to prevent other colors from showing up. So the trees are done. Let's add a new layer for sky. I'll paint the sky with a solid color and then add some clouds there. Let's create a new layer to work in the mountains then. I'll use an image of a mountain to pick colors for the mountain here.
Let's create a gradient with the sample colors. Take sample and start painting. Let's add snows on top. Let's pick up the dark shadows too. That's done then. Let's add grass too. Since I used the same color sample for the trees and the grass, it's actually not looking nice. Let's use the blending mode to change its color then. The painting is done then. Let's go to another image and see how we can retouch portraits with the mixer brush tool then. Take off the load brush option, create a new layer on top of the background layer, keep the weightness at around 30% and the flow at 100%. Load and mix option won't work here because we don't have any color in the reservoir. Make sure the sample or layers option is checked, select a soft brush and start painting. Paint around the areas you want to retouch and you'll see all the blemishes are gone. The mixer brush is simply picking up samples from the background layer and smoothing them by smudging them. You can see the result here, that's the before and that's the after. Though a lot of people seem to retouch portraits this way, I would not recommend this method though because all the textures are removed from the subject. The best way to do it is by following the frequency separation technique. First you'll separate the textures and the skin base from the portrait and then retouch the skin only while keeping the textures intact. That way you can apply a natural high-end skin retouch. You can find a lot of tutorials on frequency separation on YouTube. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that for you. Now let's go to the next level then. We'll try to create an oil painting effect using this beautiful image here by Dominic Photography. You can check out the link in the description to see his collections. I actually chose this picture because I like the texture and contour on her face. That makes working with the brush so easy. All you need to do is follow the textures and the contours. Make a copy of the background layer and reduce the opacity. Make sure you can see all the textures though. Let's set it to 90%. Add a new layer, make sure the load brush option is disabled and the sample or layers option is checked. Then select a brush tip you prefer. I'm using the basic hard round brush here with no spacing. Keep the brush size smaller and start painting. You can see how good it looks with only a little portion done, right? Now, since you can understand what I'm doing, I'll rev up the frame rate and go to the final result. Turn on the background layer and darker areas to see the details.
You might see a couple of empty spaces within your layer where you missed to add strokes. If that's too big, then paint on it. But if the spaces are smaller, then simply increase your brush size and dab over it. That will ensure the details from the layer beneath is copied and painted on top. So the painting is done. We don't need the background copy now. And you can see that's the before. And that's the after. Now you can go on to add textures on your canvas. Click on the adjustments layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel and select patterns. You can select the pattern you see there on the drop down or click on the gear icon on the top right corner of the dialog box and select a set of patterns from there. Artist surfaces and artist brush canvas are two sets of patterns specially designed for paintings. Select one of the design patterns or get one from external sources and play with the scaling. Then all you need to do is select the blending mode that matches the best. In this case, I'll go with none as I don't want anything to disturb the visibility of the textures on her face. I loved it a lot. Well, that's all about Mixtures Brush 2. Thanks for watching and please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Add a comment and let me know you watched this. Share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel for more educational videos on web design and development. Thank you.